Uh, there's a twisted irony to the pro-Palestinian marches that have swiftly become a sinister slice of life every turbulent weekend in war-torn Britain. Clearly, these vast city centre protests are profoundly pro-Palestine and deeply against Israel. But here's the thing. The pro-Palestinian crowds that snake through London, Manchester and Birmingham are also seriously anti-British. Many of the demonstrators are British citizens with an apparent grudge against their own country. Free, free Palestine, they chant as if an allegedly free Palestinian state would be a bastion of social enlightenment, a bright beacon of progressive values where women's and gay rights were sacred, a searing citadel of liberty where public protest was enshrined as part of the democratic process. Slight problem. Under the horror of Hamas, a Palestinian state would be anything but free, homosexuality would be a crime, and women's rights would be non-existent. And as for marching against the government, don't forget your toothbrush, because the next stop's prison. So, do the hundreds and thousands of marchers who gather in our seething cities realise that they're only allowed to do so thanks to the freedoms they enjoy in Britain that are banned by the medieval theological tyrants who have run Gaza into the ground. If they do, then they're retrogressive fanatics who actually want to undermine our traditions and drag the UK back to the Middle Ages. If they don't understand that Hamas's anachronistic leaders are little more than violent, deranged despots, they're the useful idiots who instinctively oppose the West and somehow believe that all foreign cultures are noble and superior. Personally, I'm against prohibiting protests, no matter how offensive some may find them. But if these people who despise the free country they live in want to disrespect the fallen, maybe they should discover what a lack of freedom is like in prison. Describing the pro-Palestine events as hate marches, Home Secretary Suella Braverman says that anyone vandalising the cenotaph must be banged up in a jail cell faster than their feet touch the ground. Uh, let's hope she sticks to her guns and that for once our justice system does the right thing. Let the punishment fit the crime. Uh, Lin May, I'm actually uh, against banning this uh, proposed march on Armistice Day on Saturday and indeed Sunday. Uh, reluctantly, I think this march should be allowed. What do you think? No, I agree. I'm really happy that you've actually said that because if we support and like these rights that you say that are often or all the time not in these countries that many people, you know, <clears throat> that are marching for, then we can't pick and choose when we want freedom of expression Absolutely. and freedom of speech. Good However, good. I hate how the conversation has gone extreme different ways. I don't see why we can't have nuance. Um, I've spoken to some people that are going to be helping to organise the uh, protest or march, and they've said there's been a lot of false news on Twitter, on various platforms. We absolutely want to respect uh, the moments of silence. We do not want to disrupt Remembrance Day. Many people from various backgrounds fought in that war. So what's going to happen is it's not going to be directly near the centre path. So um, centre path. So that's why I don't see there to be an issue. I think you can respect Remembrance Day while also marching for a cause which they're not so far apart. If we look at armatists, what does it actually mean? Ceasefire. A ceasefire. And that's what people, the majority of them marching want. Yes, there's going to be idiots and fractions that are extreme or like Hamas, but the majority of the people just want to see a stop to war, a stop to killing children. What they're seeing is 10,000 civilians dying and we're hearing, I think they've killed four yeah. Hamas soldiers so far. Have been oh, that is, dead. that's ridiculous. Isn't yeah, but we don't know that. But no, look, 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 why haven't we Lynn seen May, any though. videos? Lynn, I mean, you know, Hamas are in Ga Gaza, and as long as they're in Gaza, Israel will bomb the place. I don't know. We've seen so many videos, haven't we, of like killing children? And have you seen any, any deaths of Hamas soldiers? Uh, have I seen any what? Any videos of killing Hamas soldiers? Have you? I've not. I've, I've seen, seen what videos, they did. I've, I've seen I've, what I've... they did when they invaded on October. Okay, the we 7th. all saw that. But yeah. 
Oh, well, no, no. well, let's just skate <laughs> over. <laughs> ah, forget that. That was a no, month no, ago. I'm saying, that was a month I'm ago. Saying, have we seen at their justification for now death toll in Gaza of yeah. civilians is over 10,000? It happened 000. on October the 7th. I cannot... It happened on October the 7th. What happened? When they killed babies, raped women, executed innocent okay, people on their doorstep. OK, but now 10... Uh, shot to 10, 260 OK, what about 10,000 um, civilians? That's not the point. That's yeah. not the point. Why is that not the point? No, because, because that was a Holocaust. The, it was the massacre was of the... It was the worst the massacre of Jews since the Holocaust okay, in World okay. War II. And You're was, saying Israel doesn't have a right to respond. I, I think it that. does. I didn't say that. Well, they, uh, they are totally 1, 000, justified in what they're doing. 1,400 people... They are justified were, in what they're doing. How? Uh, because they are, because they're retaliating militarily. But Hamas is not there. So huh? you're saying Hamas, Hamas, Hamas is there. there. But the leaders are not yeah, there. Yeah, the, okay, the well, leaders listen, are listen, not listen. there. How do you know, know that? that? Israel says. Limay, the leaders may not be there, but Hamas soldiers, who are, who are keeping those, the Jewish people hostages? There are Hamas soldiers in Gaza. Have and you that... seen them killed? Who, who is Hamas holding the hostages then? Yeah, Excuse hostages? me, Limay. Are we, are we supporting Hamas here? Of course not. Well, of in that case, you must support the right of Israel to respond, not to retaliate. Yes, children. yes, yes. You do Not say... Last time you were on this dead. show, you said uh, that Israel was guilty of collective punishment. Well, it's not. It is. This is not a war crime. It no, is. no, no. You're Even accusing... People in the no, 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 no. This is not a war crime. This is not it a is war crime. No, no, no. Crime. It's a military... Uh, retaliation yeah, within here, international that's law. A human no, 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 no. <laughs> this is not a debate. This is a fact. It's not within a fact. international law. You're wrong. Israel has not <laughs> broken any war crimes. Has they not have. committed any. They have. No, in your amateurish view. No, in law. What, no. In law, they have. <coughs> Who's broke, proved it? They have. They have you have to go to the Hague Geneva, to prove that. Geneva and, and Spain has already said that they're looking to do that. Well, they haven't yet, though, have they? But they're looking to do that. Well, you, well that doesn't mean... They it's not have a, broken So, in other words, it's not a fait accompli. Do you think that they've Wait a second. <laughs> Lin May, Lin May, stop wait, wait, looking wait, wait, at him. I'm going to ask him if Stop looking at him. They have not broken any... Uh, war, they have not committed any war crimes. They have okay. not broken any laws except in your view, which, <laughs> in many which with all due views, respect, does not carry views, any weight. In many lawyers' views... You can't views, just sit there in, in London views. going, they've broken the war crimes! War I'm not crimes. the only one to you, say it. Yeah, I know. You're all idiots who are saying <laughs> it. You okay. don't know what you... You, I'm gonna you come do back not the know what you're talking you. about. <laughs> you, it, war crimes have to be proved. I think. OK, and I think that they will be. Hmm? Okay. Well, you, well, you that, can well, think that, that. Yeah, that makes more sense. I think yeah, they fine. won't be. I'll Your tell you opinion what is, is just as good as mine. Your beheading... opinion is just as good as mine. <laughs> no, it's really well, not. Okay, why is yours better? That's far superior. Why, why is yours superior? Because I've got a louder voice <laughs> for a bigger audience. That's the only that's reason why. That's the way it goes. That's the only uh, reason why. That's show business. Uh, yeah, I'm your worst nightmare. <laughs> a loud mouth with an audience. And that's it. <laughs>
Sash, she, she gets me. She gets, she gets me. <laughs> At least he owns it. She gets me. Number two, does Kevin O'Sullivan ever go f home? You can have too much of a good thing, you know. Hashtag is, is she referring to the fact that I might have been on talk TV quite a bit lately? Yes, I, yes. I, I think I called time, was it two Fridays ago, when I was on about four hours? That's because Mike Graham was off sick at the time. Uh, I don't anticipate eight hours. Eight hours. I've just been told I was on eight hours. <laughs> that is too much. I totally agree with all you <laughs> who sent me those mean tweets. I've got one more. One and more. It's a, it's, a it's a hat trick. It's a hat trick. Lemay, you're going to like this one. All right, go on. Kevin is the bloke who used to review loose women and goggle box. Now all of a sudden, he's a f expert on the Middle East. Crying, laughing face emoji. I think Paul Watson's calling an idiot, Kevin. Well, he's <laughs> right. <laughs> At least he knows. We're going to go to a real break. What just happened? For the news that matters, for the opinions that matter, for the stories that matter, find me, Vanessa Phelps, every weekday at 4pm, only on talk, on TV, on radio, online and on your smart speaker. He's mad as hell. It's Kevin O'Sullivan. Uh, welcome back. I'm still with my extremely argumentative guests, uh, JJ Anasiobi and Lynn May. Uh, here's a few words from me. Uh, we've become all too used to the police doing nothing. Car stolen? Forget it. House burgled? Not interested. Anti-Israel protesters screaming jihad on the streets of Britain? Go right ahead. The pro-Palestine cops won't even think about arresting you. But while law and order go to the dogs, don't you dare break the humour rules. Because there's one kind of police force that remains ever vigilant. The joke police, the po-faced comedy killers who enforce the suffocating regulations that guard against the horror of laughing at the wrong things. The latest target for the miserable mirth monitors is long-running TV cartoon The Simpsons. For 35 seasons since the legendary animated series started way back in 1989, Homer and Bart's explosive rows ended with the fuming father furiously throttling his badly behaved boy. But in the new episode, Homer suddenly reveals that strangling Bart is a thing of the past. I don't do that anymore, he tells his wife Marge. Times have changed. There was a time when we could watch a cartoon without taking it too seriously. A time when we could see the difference between caricature TV slapstick and the scourge of real-life violence. A time when instead of descending into a self-obsessed abyss of hand-wringing guilt, we could just laugh. But that golden age of common sense was already dying a tragic death when The Simpsons' local store owner, Apu, was axed because his Asian accent was voiced by white American actor Hank Azaria. The joke police strike again, offence archaeologists excavating scripts and searching for offence that no one would ever take. Welcome to our brave new puritanical world. No longer are we allowed to giggle at the silly sexism of the carry-on films. Gone are the days when we dared to find the Don't Mention the War episode of Faulty Towers funny. We're not permitted to see Basil at his preposterous brilliant best anymore. Little Britain, come fly with me, the mighty Bush, the League of Gentlemen, all censored on the altar of overarching pervasive wokery, on the altar of some strange conviction that we are the greatest generation of perfect people who ever lived and that we have the right to stamp out everything that ever happened if we don't approve of it, by pretending ludicrously that the nasty stuff we dislike did not happen, by pretending that race-based BBC sitcoms till death us do part and it ain't half hot mum and ITV's Love Thy Neighbour weren't huge hits in the 1960s and 70s, but they just were. This is not a call for blackface to stage an unwanted comeback, nor is it a plea for the return of racism and sexism as sources of comedy. But can we just please stop the madness? Can we stop kidding ourselves that anyone was ever traumatised by Homer strangling Bart and that somehow the world would be a far better place if we act like those scenes never happened? They just did. 
Censorship of the past does not erase the truth and it does not eradicate reality. Can we please all just grow up? It is pathetic, isn't it, it's James? It's absolutely ridiculous, mate. I, I can't stand this. Um, the Simpsons, I mean, it hasn't been funny for a long time, to be, to be fair. <laughs> that's another <laughs> reason. Yeah, that's another reason. But um, Homer Strangling Bar, it's a freaking cartoon. We all know it's a cartoon. The, the way the boy's neck jerks and uh, all that, we can see it's not real life. His no one. Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, Everyone can on. watch that and know, oh, it's just a bit of fun. It's just a joke. The fact that we have to now change it and Simpsons feel that they've got to change it to be seen as safe by society is absolutely ridiculous. It's a stain on our culture. No, <laughs> well, there you go. Strong words from JJ. <laughs> Lynn May, where do you stand no, on No, I this? think it's pathetic. And I think this is why. Agreement. Yes. Yeah. The three of us. <laughs> agree. <laughs> right. Let's talk for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Make a really nice show then, can't we? <laughs> Sorry, you were saying that. No, I just think this is why a lot of young people, not to hate on like people younger than me, but this is why they're like absolutely they're so soft. pathetic. Yeah, yeah, they're soft. I was speaking earlier today about there's been a 75% increase in 18 to 24 year olds going on benefits because, you know, they're just affected by everything almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so what if we see someone strangling? Are we going to just remove everything that's funny now? To be, to be fair, I mean, you're right. A lot of these young people are traumatised by that sort of nonsense, which is everything in, it, in itself them. pathetic. But to be fair to a lot of people, uh, this is these offence archaeologists are second guessing what they think people will be offended by, searching through scripts to finding, oh, right, we've got to get rid of this, otherwise they'll be hell to pay. Even though uh, those scenes, uh, as with Homer and Bart, have been going on for 34 years, yeah. 35 years. Do you remember Johnny Bravo, the cartoon Johnny Bravo? It was all about a guy, white guy, yeah, really yeah, pumped yeah, really muscles, big blonde tiny hair, legs. tiny legs, and he, used, he was just a sexist. He'd go out and he could go to women, hey, hop, mama, let's go on a date. And he was a real sex pest. Yeah. But so are like... you telling me my technique's not very good? <laughs> <laughs> this is where you're going wrong. <laughs> hey, hop, mama. Well, yeah, exactly, yeah. that was him. Yeah. yeah, he was funny, it was hilarious. But now that's considered, you can't have a comedy based around sexism. Why not? Well, that's it, that's it. Uh, the, the, the irony. Uh, is another tragedy. It seems yeah. to have died a death. But what you said is right. Who actually really is offended? Gen Z. Uh, you know, Gen all, Z you, know you know all these new positions like um, that they're creating for diversity and all the rest of it. Uh -huh. Like you said, they must be creating these positions and they're just looking for things. Otherwise, they'll be out of a job. But they are. They're called offence archaeologists. Deliberately. Yeah. Oh, that was a real thing. For causes. Well, well, no. Oh, <laughs> there's no title called yeah. offence archaeologist. What do you do for a living? I'm an offence archaeologist. <laughs> no, no, no. They're not. It's not an official <laughs> job title. Wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> but, but that's effectively <laughs> what they're doing. But uh, uh, let's get out to the world's smallest violin. Let's weep a tear and let's watch a scene that we'll never see again. It is Homer strangling bar. <laughs> Yeah, it's good to see, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Thing is, with those old. Um, I think more dads should strangle their... You're a son. You've got yeah, a son. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think more dads should strangle, strangle their kids. Or just a, or a backhand. That's a yeah. joke, folks. <laughs> You've got to be careful, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, that's what you'll say. You see, if I, if I say, oh, I think more dads should strangle hey, their that's kids, that's it. People go, that's so offensive. Oh, oh, it's oh, a oh. joke. <laughs> it's irony. And that is dying. The, the ability to laugh at yeah, ourselves yeah, yeah, through exactly. irony. As yeah, you said, yeah. what's that guy called? Johnny, Johnny Bravo. Bravo. Yeah. When he's going, like, hey, hot mama, do you want to It's not serious. It is actually taking the mickey, taking the piss yeah, out exactly. of people who would say that. Exactly. Same with Alf Garnett and all those kind of old racist comedies. But you have to. You have to they the did get a bit racist. They did something. get. They did get a bit racist. But the, the real joke was on the fact that yeah, these it, people were being racist. Like he, he's such a dinosaur. JJ. You know, yeah, exactly. that was it. Yeah. It was the, the joke was on uh, uh, um, Alf, Alf yeah. Garnett. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And uh, we've lost that. That little Britain as well. I thought that was fantastic. <laughs> and, uh, do you know what's good about little Britain? Everyone got it. <laughs> well, Disabled. <laughs> Black, white, working I class. I never posh. found Little Britain funny. It yeah. was. I, I never liked it, but but I don't think it should be banned. So this is Little Britain. This was the format. It was just the the Everyone pursuit got of it. pursuit of catchphrase. Yeah. That would be like uh, Matt Lucas going, you know, doing that gay thing. <laughs> Waiting for him to go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the only gay in the village. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, the other one was uh, the, the uh, I'm above no, I'm above I'm above yeah! yeah it was just like wait these really long boring sketches yeah building up to the uh, catchphrase, catchphrase yeah. that Stereo we knew type. only too well yeah so I agree with you I don't think a little bit 
Yeah. But Little Britain, uh, I would never have a catchphrase myself, of course. What just <laughs> happened? <laughs> but uh, so I don't mind Little Britain going because it wasn't funny. Come Fly With Me was even less funny. Yeah. I mean, come, did you see Come Fly With Me? No. It was a massive blackface. David yeah, yeah. Williams. Yeah, yeah, David yeah. Williams. Yeah, yeah. You know, I never he, saw it. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. You're not, that, a, you're not that young. J David Williams <laughs> is the Justin Trudeau of TV. <laughs> never <laughs> happy unless he's got blackface. Yeah, on. yeah. Wow, yeah, it's terrible. It was terrible. But even worse, than that, I think uh, the biggest crime in comedy has been Miranda. That has never been... You hate movie. Miranda. I can't stand Miranda. It's terrible. That needs to be, be banned and re mm, written out of history completely. Of, it's a bit middle class. <laughs> it's far too middle class and not funny. Yeah. Oh, look, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big, goofy woman. Yeah. That, that's the joke. So yeah. oh. Do you know what you call uh, middle class women running a shop in a small provincial town that sells <laughs> sort of knickknacks? Do you know what they, you call them? No. Broke. <laughs> Well, that's enough for our banter, but we do have time for one more bad f***ing no. Fantastic. Where's Jill? She's really lonely and out walking the cornfield again. Do you think they will ever find his true love? Not hanging out with us all day. We used to be lonely. Until we met on Farmers Only. FarmersOnly.com is the new online dating site for farmers, ranchers, and good old country folks. You don't have to be lonely at FarmersOnly.com. City folks just don't get it. Well, that's true. That must be quite new. I've that's got embarrassing, farmers isn't it? I'll only... give over. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You're, just, you're just signing up. <laughs> so I, I got a better idea for farmers, farmers only fans. <laughs> so you get farmers in the nude. Do you want to go out with them? Uh, how many female farmers are there? Probably zero. Are you living out your fantasy? Do the... <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. No. What do you mean? I just said how many <laughs> female farmers are there? I don't know any. I, I know one female farmer. But I, it just strikes me. Well, perhaps we'll discuss this on next week's <laughs> edition of <laughs> What Just Happened. Uh, how many female farmers are there? Is it a sexist profession? It is yeah. sexist profession. Yeah. Because you yeah. have Farmer Joe's, you don't have Farmer Jane, do you? I don't exactly. get this sexist profession. If you want to go and be a farmer, what's stopping you? Just uh, like, oh, there's not enough. Well, 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 nothing is stopping me and JJ. You. Yeah, no, no chance. I could be a wrong gender. gender. <laughs> so wrong sex. Wrong yeah, yeah. Different. yeah. They, they, they could change gender. gender sex. Yeah. We'll talk oh. about that for yeah. about an hour. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, sorry, I've just lost the will to live. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's about it for this week. Uh, big thanks to JJ and SCOB. I take the piss out of him every week, but I'm very glad he turns up. It's, it says here. Uh, and political and social commentator Lynn May, May for an extremely uh, volatile appearance yeah. uh, uh, that's it for another edition what just happened we'll be back same time same place next week right here on talk tv what just happened people of britain do you fancy a good dose of common sense before bed because the independent republican mike graham is now in prime time we still cover all the stories that matter and put the world to rights we just do it a little bit later on so don't miss the Independent Republican Mike Graham Monday to Thursday nights at 9pm right after Piers Morgan Uncensored. Yes, the revolution will be televised. Look, I'm getting ready for my new primetime show on talk TV and radio, 7 o'clock Saturday night, James Whale Unleash. I don't need you coming in here, following me around with a cat. I'm so sorry about this. Saturdays at 7 on talk TV.